you did production for William Shatner and Amanda Palmer. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, do your own stuff. You uh, work with orchestras, mm -hmm. with the bands. Yeah. Um, what do all these constellations have in common despite you doing music and uh, what do you prefer of all these constellations? Uh, just like, I do like going from one thing to another and um, I suppose by the end of the next year I will have done a few things that will surprise a few people. Mm -hmm. just, 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 yeah, I just, I, I just want to, I just want to keep doing I like opportunities to present themselves and that might be kind of wimpy, like I don't think about going Wow, I'm going to try to go do this, and then, and then again. like the orchestra thing was something that came to me. The William Shatner thing was something that came to me. Uh, Amanda was a little more meeting in the middle because I wrote her family and told her how much I like the Dresden Dolls, and the next thing I knew, we were making a record. Um, but I, 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 I've, I've had some very bizarre things, um, opportunities come up that I think I'll take just because they're bizarre. I and mean, I wish I could tell you what they were now, but I don't know if I'll do them. So, um, how cool is William Shatner in real life? Because everyone has grown up with him yeah. on TV. How is it to meet him? Mm. He's, um, he's great. He's, he's cool. I mean, the reason he's cool is because he doesn't try to be uh, anything. He doesn't try to be cool. I mean, he, he, he just likes to keep learning. You know, he's like 70. Five, seven, six years old, and he, he just wants to keep learning. So, if you were to talk to him, he'd find one thing that's very interesting and he'd keep asking him about it. It's like, so the smiley face that he was wearing on your shirt. And he'd keep asking, now, why does this have? It seems threadbare. Is this cool? He'd, he'll ask you about, about yourself a lot because he's interested in you and, and he'll. Uh, yeah, he's not afraid of doing things. I mean, he's, I, you know, he got a motorcycle wreck not too long ago. Um, he's, he'll, he'll, he'll lift a 150, 200 pound table and go walking it down the hill so I can stay in his guest house with a table in it. It's crazy. Um, and how was working with Amanda Palmer? Amanda was great. She's, every, she's, um, well, because she's a real writer. Like, she is a writer. That's what she is. And some people write, but they're not really writers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Amanda can't help herself. She works really hard, too. Um, I think she was perfect, um, perfect subject for me to produce because there were challenges about her that I needed to learn about before I made my record. I mean, I would watch her go through different phases and, and, and helping her navigate through those things to make her record really made my record easy. So that was really good for me myself. And she made a really good record. We made a good record. It's a good record. So is there anyone that you'd like to work with but haven't yet? Um, well, there's so many talented people out there. I, mean, I, I, I was just uh, batting ideas around with Josh Grogan. And, uh, what I enjoyed about that was he's the best singer I've ever heard in person. Like, he's just, his voice is so amazing. So, how fun is it to go, and then, okay, Josh, do you know the music? Mm -hmm. Josh Groban, he's kind of like an opera singer, but he sings pop music, but it's kind of pop opera. Okay. I guess, I don't know. He's totally different from what I do. Um, but I would, I would, I would say, well, let's try this, and he'd do something, and, and that means anything I think of in my head, this man is gonna come out of his mouth and it's gonna sound that good. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is awesome. This is going to be really good, you know, like that's fun. And he and, and people expect him to do this particular thing. He sold millions of records. And he does a certain thing, but we're going to do something to him, so. Um, so, if I'm informed correctly, you said that you won't perform Bitches Ain't Shit anymore? Well, uh, it's in retirement right now. So, uh, are there any other songs that you have sung like years ago and will never sing? They just sort of, they phase themselves out. There are songs I, I, I can think of some songs that I don't just I just don't seem to do for some reason. So usually it's because of, some songs they burn out, uh, yeah. and then some some songs I just can't remember why I wrote them. So uh, do you still listen to old records, or do you just record them and put them into the shelf and then they're done? They're done. 
Because I got I mean, do have an opportunity to hear them for some reason, either make a tape for someone of here's what you should know about this, or like the orchestra things, like I have to put together a, a CD, you know, for Rangers to work with. Um, it'll also be, they sound different than I remember. Because I'll play it live all the time, turn it into something else, and they go, oh, God, that was slow. That's bizarre. So, um, what are songs that you proud of? Nothing really sticks out. Because they're all so different. Um, I mean, because I'm proud of some songs because of the way they sound on the record, and others I'm proud of because I can play them just at the piano, with nothing else, and they really hold up on their own. I think, I think when something becomes popular in, in one way or another, that makes you reevaluate something you didn't know about the song, like the song The Luckiest. So many people come up to me and tell me that they were married to that song, in an American way. One after another, like, oh, that was our wedding song. I'll be like a Starbucks or something. <laughs> so we'll up, My wife and I gave you your song, and I don't know how many people were married to that song. But that makes me reevaluate the song and go, wow, it's kind of better than I thought it was. You know?